Well, here I am again at the lathe. Uh, this time I've got a piece of uh, maple chucked up that uh, uh, that was a piece from the larger piece of maple that I received from Scott at Ads Wood Wood Turning. Um, I got that wrong when I and when I made my thank you video. It's Ads Wood Turning. <laughs> That's his uh, YouTube channel. Anyway, this. Uh, this is a piece of maple that was a piece of the larger piece of maple that he uh, sent along with his uh, gift of a bull gouge to me, which I'm still very, very grateful for. Um, <coughs> and I, you know, I want to make something special out of it, so I'm going to do something a little different with this. Uh, I'm going to make a three-sided um, bud vase. Um, try anyway <laughs> see how that goes okay so as you can see I've got it down to round already and I've flattened off the face what I've also done is I've added a small divot in the uh, in the end to uh, to receive my Forstner bit so it doesn't move either way that way I get a good clean start uh, once I once I get in there and start to drill Because it's just a small butt face, it doesn't really have to be all that deep. But what I am going to do is I'm going to dish it out a little bit, just so I can get my Forstner bit a little bit deeper and just... That'll do for now. Okay, now I'm gonna go for that little bit of extra depth that I want. Okay, so this line here now is uh, where the bottom of the hole is. So that's, uh, that's where the base of the vase is going to start. I'm gonna make a mark there, so follow it. There. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Um, this is the bottom of my hole, so the bottom of the vase will be roughly in this area here. And I want it to be kind of a, you know, brownish. at the top or and then just kind of build into the build into the uh, the base and now for the three-sided part of it I'm going to have to determine a depth for the uh, the lower lowermost portion of the the neck here just so I have something to go by. So I'm going to cut a groove in here. Um, I'm going to leave this and for the, uh, the bottom I'm also going to cut a groove showing where the where I want the bottom to end. Um, Pretty much the same depth 
as the as the neck. I haven't done one like this before, so I'm just winging it. So, <laughs> so bear with me. Well, just while I'm doing this, I move my tail stuck up. Okay, I've done this eccentric style thingy a few times, so I'm, I seem to be working out a bit of a system. Now, before I take this out of the chuck and start uh, uh, adjusting my chuck, I'm going to mark out where I'm starting, mark out my starting point. Oh, and you know what? I'm not going to use this one. Because the number one jaw on here, um, the tooth, uh, at the very top of it is is not very strong it's a very thin tooth and I just I don't want to bend it out of shape so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this around to number two this is my number two jaw and that's going to be my starting position so I'm going to make mark it with a piece of tape make sure it's good and stuck and I'm just going to put a little black tick on it And that will be the starting location. Alright, now, this is where I want my starting position to be. So I'm going to move it around to the other side. Okay. I'm going to start pulling these out. I'm just going to keep my hand under here so this one doesn't quite fall right out. periodically check. See that one's number four, that one came up first. Three. Two will probably be the next one out. Yes, there it is. And one. So, one, two, three, four. So I need two and four. That's number two. This is number four. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring number four in for a few spins. And I'm watching the teeth pass by. Yeah, let me go back here. Oh, come on. <laughs> Had nothing to do with the dust, I just couldn't see it. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait for this to drop. Now it's in the first tooth. There's a, there's four spiraling teeth that go in here, and it's in its first one there. Now if I were to set this number two in there, it would grab its next tooth, but I don't want it to do that. I want to take this in for another couple of teeth, so that would probably have been another tooth, another tooth, another tooth. There we go. So. This next one, I think. There's the next tooth in here. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. But the next tooth is coming in. So, I'm going to grab that with my number two. 
and pull that in. Now, you can see we're offset. Just a little bit. But it will be enough to give a three, give me three distinctive sides. Now if that, I didn't think that was enough, I could actually even take it probably one more tooth in before um, the number four jaw just fell into the center and because it ran out of teeth to, to grab hold with. Right now it, it's holding with all of its teeth. So that's, uh, that's good. It's good and sturdy, that's just hand tight right now. But now what I want to do is find a starting spot. Um, in other words, the first third that's going to get cut away. And um, let me see, there is a little crack in here. There it is. That's the first part I want to cut away at here. So I'm going to actually line that crack up with the center. Actually, maybe I'd be better off having that on the corner. Oh, I don't really know. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to put that in the center. I'm just going to set that where it is. Tighten it in. Get it nice and tight. It's amazing how much hold two jaws have. Now, before I do anything else, and before I forget, this is my mark that I made earlier. I'm going to mark it on the wood. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to mark this thing into thirds. I'm going to have to show you how, to do, how I do that. I have three minutes before I have to uh, empty out my SD card, so I'm going to run through this really quick. Right, I want to be able to take that off again, so I'm going to go around upside down. Sticky side is up on the tape. So I've gone all the way around. Now I'm going to come back around. I'm going to fold that over and come back around so that I have just basically a strip of masking tape that's taped onto itself. I'm going to cut that off. Right there. Pull this up. Oops. Pull that up. Finish that. Finish that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it from the line. I'm going to come around. I'm going to mark that line. Man, they make these things tight. Hold on. I've got three minutes, man. Two minutes now. I'm running out of time. There we go. So that's the end. That's distance. So now what I have to do is I have to divide this into thirds, which isn't that hard. Just fold it over, and you fold it over again. See how I did that? I folded it over, folded it over again. Try to stay, trying to stay as even as possible. There, now I have the creases. I will simply mark on the creases on there, on there, take it back, put this on the original line, move it around, that'll be step two, move it around, place, and that'll be step three. There we go. I still have 30 seconds to spare before my card runs out of space. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. There's the mark for the number one position, and that's where we're starting. There's the mark for the number two position. And I marked that down here on the dovetail, just, just in case I get it carved off over here. 
Um, and number three, same thing, marked it on the dovetail. I was just checking to see what uh, what kind of what area I'm going to be hitting on on here. So I start with a slim band, and it's going to widen out from there. Yeah. Hmm. Boy, I tell you, I sure would love to use that new bowl gouge I got from Scott. It adds uh, wood turning, um, <laughs> but I think a half inch bowl gouge is a little bit overkill on on this little guy so <laughs> we'll just uh, we'll just stick with the old tools here and uh, I'm gonna start by uh, refining the uh, refining the mouth here a little bit and uh, kind of working on getting a neck in, in here I just want to note too right off the bat that uh, I'm using my slowest speed right now on the lathe. There we go. Now what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to come up to the uh, to the lip of the uh, of the vase, but I want to leave about a quarter to an eighth of an inch just at the top, and then I'm going to work down from that. And I'm just about there, so I'm going to I'm going to stop moving towards the towards the mouth and I'm going to start de uh, defining the neck area. I'm going to stop here because as you can see, there we go, there's that. <coughs> I've just come up to the um, to the point now where uh, where I cut the groove in. And I was thinking that would be about as narrow as I want this neck to be. I just want there to be subtle angles on this. Uh, but you know, I'm going to go just a little bit further in here. I want to be sure not to continue my cut too far down because I could catch on the uh, the other side here so I'm being very careful not to do that. As a matter of fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coming in now from the bottom and working my way up to the top. Now I want to make sure that I'm even all the way along. Uh, so what I've done is I've marked a line from the beginning to the end along the shaft of the number one position here. Okay. Now I've marked the same on two and on number three. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to make sure that my cut comes up to the next line here too and the cut here is up to this line okay that, that way I know my my corners are all going to be uh, relatively equal as far as I can figure <laughs> See, I'm up to the line there. I should be, yeah, up to the line here. Just about. A little bit off, but well, I'll give it a little bit more maybe. And uh, But first I'll match up the, the bottom here. Take a 
look at that now. Okay, just about up to the line here, and just about up here, so a little bit more, a little bit more at the top, a little more off the top. Just a little over on this side. Okay. That's okay though. Now, now I'm just going to round down the bottom here a little bit. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this a sanding. Yeah, and uh, actually I'm going to refine that top a little more, I don't know if that, it's too chunky. Okay, there we go. I've uh, got it now sanded to 600 grit. It's looking all right. It looks like I have a couple of tool bruises in there, but uh, well, still not too bad. And plus, I'm going to give it an overall sanding, uh, plus uh, add the oil to it once all three sides have been cut. So now, with that sanded up to 600 grit, I'm going to turn it around into the second position. First position. This is the second. Okay, clamped in there, good. I'm gonna line it up as good as I can. So it's as equal to first as possible. <laughs> Not really blocking the view there. Sorry about that. So well, now that I've got it turned around into the second position, oops, sorry. This is a dangerous oh. that that we're now it's in the second position, I'm get ready to cut that now. Okay, now you already saw me cut the first one, I'm not going to bore you with the, uh, the next two here, and I'll come back when I'm closer to having the finished project. Finished, finished product. Well, as you can see, um, <laughs> I didn't get it anywhere near symmetrical. <laughs> that, that, I tell you, that is hard. That is, that is not an easy task. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I have it sanded down to uh, 600 grit. And, uh, yeah, before anybody you know, goes ahead and makes any comments on what it resembles. Yeah, I see that now. <laughs> but anyway, keep it clean, please. <laughs> Alright, uh, so like I say, it didn't, uh, didn't exactly turn out symmetrical. Uh, and yeah, it, uh, it's got an odd shape, but I, I did uh, I did get three sides. There's one side, there's two sides, and there's three sides. Um, and yeah. Uh, anyway, it's a maple bud vase uh, made from uh, the uh, the generous donation I received from of uh, of maple that I. Uh, I received from Scott at uh, Ads Wood Turning. 
anyway, check out his channel. Uh, he's got a lot of great videos and uh, yeah. Take care.